For all the mass of today's media, news that matters to New Orleans is still delivered on the porch, or the stoop, as it's known in the Crescent City. The stoop is where people get together to vent, to cry, to laugh. Our Tom Gregory, a Hurricane Katrina survivor himself, had the chance to sit on the stoop with jazz legends Bob French and Branford Marcellus and talk about the city and the music they love so much. In, in this situation, I knew Mr. French and Mr. Batiste personally. I mean, I'm, I'm a student of, of, of both of theirs. And uh, so, so it's an honor, but it's always been an honor. It's been an honor to know him since I've known him. I've known him since I was 10 years old, uh, when my dad was playing in a band that he had at a club called Crazy Shirley's in New Orleans, and they played for, for years together, uh, once or twice a week. I think it was once a week, right? It was once or twice? Twice? Six nights a week. Six nights a week? Where were you? Man, I was in school. <laughs> I was in school, remember? 10, 10 years old, nice school. Week, six hours. I had homework to do. Anyway. Go finish. Anyway. <laughs> Here on Bob French's Soup in Musicians Village, you'll notice that talking in New Orleans is a little less conversation and more like jazz. What kind of 10 year old was he? <laughs> like all 10 year olds, knew everything in the world but didn't know anything. Yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of being young. <laughs> tell, tell it like it is, but he learned fast and he learned from the best. As long as New Orleans has been a primary source of musical ingenuity, the original Tuxedo Jazz Band has been there. The last 30 years of its nearly 100 year history have been under the brilliant direction of Bob French, who like his father before him, carried forward the sounds of classic New Orleans jazz. If he's not playing drums 25 years ago, you're not sitting here today. That, that's fair to say. Uh, it, it's great. Uh, it's great to be from a city like this one, where the, 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 there's so many cultural ties to the music. Uh, and I think that that's one of the things that you really don't find in a lot of places in the States anymore, uh, is people actually feeling a cultural tie, that, that the music is an extension of a culture, as opposed to some creation in a basement. And I think that that has really helped me uh, better play jazz music, and it's definitely helped me better play uh, classical music and all the other kinds of music that I've tried. Having established a commitment to emerging jazz artists, Bramford's label, Marcellus Music, now directs its focus to spotlighting the legends who, like the city itself, have contributed so much yet have often been taken for granted. Here's a CD, and they say Marcellus present. Well, they'll stop and look at it, and they see, well, it might be all right, I'll buy it. So it helps. I'd done CDs before with other folks and myself, but they were like not distributed anywhere. We do this thing and it's distributed all over the country, all over the world. So it gives me some, some validity and it's good for me. Maybe I'll make more money this year. <laughs> <laughs> Marcellus Music also honored Alvin Baptiste, one of the legendary pioneers of jazz, a musician, a composer, and one of the leaders in jazz education. He played with Cannonball Adderley and Ray Charles, and his students included American Idol's Randy Jackson, Donald Harrison, Henry Butler, and Branford Marcellus. But he was much more than a teacher to Branford. It was like having a tree in my backyard. He was around so much that I don't remember not knowing him. So. Uh, it was it, it it was less it was less of an honor f t for me and more sort of uh, filial f uh, f fealty, you know. Where I'm just these are like my music they're my musical fathers, and I was basically paying homage to them. Uh, and it was marvelous for me to get 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 an opportunity to play with with my kinfolk. So the, you know, I, it was just it was a marvelous experience for me. Mr. Bat was supposed to sit with us for a while on the stoop but the day before, he died. I've had my share and drank my fill And even though I'm satisfied Well, I'm hungry still Elvin Batiste died 13 hours before he was to be featured at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. But as always, in this city, the show went on and do it all again.
so here to life and every joy it brings. Lord of nature's fair, good vibrations everywhere. Holding hands in the park, thinking things nature's brought, getting high as the sky with love. With Branford in his place, Mr. Bat's jazz funeral became a celebration of his life and music. We had three different generations in that band. Mm. The banjo player and myself were in one generation. The trumpet player, he's in another He and the trombone player, they're in another generation. And Branford and Harry. They were in there another generation, but we all played together and we all knew what we were doing, and it worked. So, you know. You just don't see that anywhere else. Well, no, because the other folks are not as smart as we are. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just smart enough to live in a city where the music, the food, the culture, and the people itself are interwoven into the spirit of New Orleans. relationship with the culture to the music is not something that's ever discussed here because it, it exists. So you don't have to talk about it. It's just in the air. It's in the food. It's in the people. It's in the churches. It's just it's part of the real deal. From New Orleans, I'm Tom Gregory for Backstage.